So in the second video lesson on panel data models, uh, I will introduce you the classic fixed effects and uh, random effects approaches. So recall from the previous lesson that uh, the central theme in the panel data econometrics is the modeling of the latent heterogeneity term UI. And uh, the econometric problems are yeah, that uh, if this UI correlates with the explanatory variables, then we have the endogeneity problem. And uh, if not, then we still need to deal with the heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation somehow. So this is really the distinguishing feature between the, the fixed effects versus random effects approaches that I will discuss later. So in the fixed effects approach, uh, we do allow for the possibility of endogeneity and try to eliminate this, uh, this um, uh, latent heterogeneity term UI to avoid the problem. And uh, whereas in the random effects model, then we assume that there is no endogeneity problem and we focus on dealing with the heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation. Okay, so those are the two distinguishing features between the fixed effects and random effects. So let's start first with the, with the fixed effects model. So in some sense, there's nothing changes in this, uh, in this regression equation, except that I have uh, eliminated for the sake of clarity this intercept term beta 1 because uh, it cannot be, uh, cannot be distinguished from this uh, firm-specific UI. Uh, another point that, uh, that also for these variables L and K, so those need to be time-varying, those explanatory variables. So we cannot include in the fixed effects the estimation any explanatory variable that is constant over time. So for example, uh, we will look into this example of uh, electricity distribution firms. So uh, in many, many times in this kind of applications, it would be of interest to have this um, uh, service area of this kind of local monopoly. So what is the service area in square kilometers, for example, then, uh, then uh, this kind of service area doesn't necessarily change over time and therefore it cannot be used in the fixed effects model. Uh, similar kind of concerns could be in the in the case of uh, uh, cross country panels. So, for example, if we have the land area of a country, then typically the land area of country doesn't change unless there are some kind of wars. So, in the peaceful times, then then land area of a country cannot be used in the cross country panel in the fixed effects estimation. So then comes this kind of little bit more subtle. Uh, issue that, okay, what if we have uh, explanatory variables that uh, do change over time, but only very little, and maybe maybe not for all observations, there is not any changes. So very often in this kind of production function case, it could be the capital stock that uh, uh, changes very slowly over time. And if the time, time horizon is not very long, then uh, this kind of almost time invariant capital stock could, could be a problem. <laughs> In my impression, the situation is, is, is a bit similar to the, for example, multicollinearity problem in the econometrics that, uh, that uh, there is not some kind of clear-cut threshold that when, when an explanatory variable can be considered to be uh, sufficiently time-varying uh, time that it can be included in a fixed effects model. But it's important to be aware of this problem because I, I think uh, I've seen several applications where the results look uh, very, very weird and at least I would suspect that it might be might have something to do with the with the um, almost time invariant uh, regressors present in the in the equation. So I would uh, I would be cautious about using this kind of uh, almost time time invariant regressors if I use the fixed effects model. But again, there is not some kind of strong strong theory that, that when almost time invariant regressor is is a problem or not. There is some, some literature, but not some kind of uh, clear-cut answer. So um, it will become more evident why this kind of time invariant regressors cannot be used. I will, I will point out that in, a, in a moment. So how do we estimate then the, the fixed effects model? So one way to think about it would be that, uh, that uh, we could just use this kind of uh, firm ID that we, uh, that we have in the data to form a number of dummy variables. So we could have this kind of firm specific dummy variables 
or if it's a cross-country panel, we could have a country-specific dummies, and then we could just estimate this kind of uh, OLS regression with the with the dummy variables. Notice that this is the, the reason why I eliminated the intercept term, because if you have this kind of firm-specific UI, then to avoid the dummy variable trap, earlier we did so that we chose one of these kind of uh, uh, categorical variables well, as, as a reference category. So we could do that as well here. So we could have the intercept term, but then leave one of the firms as the reference firm. Um, but, uh, but for sake of the notation, it's somehow easier to to eliminate the uh, intercept term. So uh, also in the context of dummy variables, that would be another another possibility. So if we if we exclude the uh, intercept term, then uh, we could then have this kind of full set of dummy variables. Okay. So that's the point uh, point about this identification of the intercept. Uh, so we cannot tell tell uh, the difference between this uh, this uh, intercept term or the or the dummy variables. A practical difficulty in this is that, uh, that for example, in this electricity distribution application, we have uh, uh, 80 different firms in the sample. And uh, at least I'm not aware of them, some very convenient way of creating so many dummy variables. Uh, so, and that could be also, also then costly in terms of the degrees of freedom to use this, uh, so many dummy variables. So, although this is a possible way to do it, especially if you have uh, only relatively few uh, few firms or few countries uh, in the in the panel, then uh, this is not normally how the how the panel data model or the fixed effects model is actually estimated. Okay, so this kind of like like uh, linear regression with dummy variables uh, would be a feasible approach if you have uh, relatively few firms or few countries in the panel. But normally we might have uh, like thousands of firms in the in the same panel. So then this clearly becomes infeasible. So another way to way to try to eliminate this time invariant heterogeneity would be then resort to the differencing. So remember in the in the context of uh, time series, especially for the unit root, uh, eliminating the stochastic trend, this first differencing was the was the way. And we also had this in the con context of autocorrelation. So if we now take the difference in, over the time period, so if we have a uh, y in period y i in period t and y i in period t minus one. So if we if we then take this difference, uh, then notice that this time invariant u i will cancel out because u i is the same in period t and in period t minus one. So that would be one way of uh, of uh, estimating the the fixed effects model, eliminating those uh, u i terms completely. And uh, uh, that would be a feasible approach, but it's not so commonly used because uh, uh, one reason is that uh, that with the differencing, we of course uh, uh, we lose in the panel data in in observation. So so with the difference, we will we will um, in immediately lose some information, and there is even a better way. But uh, notice that this kind of uh, this also this difference uh, equation. Um, illustrate the link that we often have with the fixed effects estimation, the so-called uh, uh, treatment effect model, such as difference in differences. So, uh, so indeed, very often fixed effects model is uh, sort of underlying this kind of difference in difference estimator, where the purpose would be kind of look at the impact of some, some, uh, some uh, policy intervention, for example, considered as the treatment. So you would have like, like in some kind of uh, uh, medical trials, you would have a treatment group and a control group, and you try to try to then um, estimate the impact of the of the policy change or whatever treatment was, is relevant for the economic applications. So uh, indeed, uh, when when uh, when using this kind of treatment effects, the fixed effects is uh, is actually also widely widely used in that context. So in this course, I don't go to so much in details to this kind of applied econometrics techniques like uh, difference in difference and other other treatment effects models. There are other other courses where you can you can learn about that. So th that would be fall to the theme of applied econometrics. Okay. 
So then coming back to the fixed effects model, so if this uh, differencing is not the, not the way that is estimated, then how it is actually estimated? So here's the answer. So, so um, if we take then difference, but not the difference over time, panel data actually allows us to take a difference from the mean. So if we take this kind of uh, firm specific mean, so I have indicated with this uh, upper bar, the, the average value of, uh, of uh, y for firm i, and then L upper bar is the average value of labor input in firm i uh, over this time period. And similarly, capital, uh, capital K upper bar is the, the average value of capital in this firm i over this time period. We can also take, of course, and we need to take also average over this error term v, but notice that, uh, that uh, of course, ui is constant, so the average of ui is also just ui. So that's the, the reason why the difference from the mean then allows us to effectively eliminate this, uh, this uh, Latin heterogeneity term ui. And uh, notice that in contrast to this kind of uh, difference, uh, first difference over time periods, now we do not lose any observation. So we have this uh, n times capital T observations in the, in, the, in the sample, but we have effectively eliminated this, uh, this UI term. So if you are interested in estimating this uh, firm specific UI, then we can do that subsequently by, by uh, after estimating those parameters, beta L and beta K, then we can uh, estimate those in the same way that we estimated the intercept term in the uh, in the in the early part of this course when we had the, the intercept intercept beta one. So that would be just the the difference between the the average y and the predicted uh, average of of this uh, firm i. Okay. So this uh, this ui is not not a uh, explicitly anymore in the regression equation by eliminating this heterogeneity term we can then resort to the to the OLS estimator and then we can subsequently then uh, estimate those those UI terms so to illustrate here is then uh, the results of the fixed effects estimation in in Stata so notice that like like in the previous cases also then this uh, uh, regression output is uh, very similar to the usual usual OLS. There are a couple of uh, points to note, note though. So, uh, as I mentioned, we need to indicate in Stata this, uh, uh, what is this so-called group var variable in terms of Stata. So I had this ID, ID code as this group variable. And uh, in this data, actually, there was 82 groups. So 82 firms in the sample. And then this, uh, this uh, we need to also indicate that, okay, what is the time variable? That was the year. And uh, Stata automatically calculates this, uh, uh, this overall R-squared statistics, so the empirical fit, but it also then decomposes it to so-called within effects and, and between effects. So this uh, between effect, so between R-squares is 0 0.9197 is very high. So that indicates that the model uh, explains differences in the in the output uh, between firms very well. So this this uh, this model can can predict uh, differences between the firms. However, within the firm, so this time series dimension is relatively small, zero point two only. So this within R squared statistic indicates that okay, how well this uh, uh, model can predict the changes in output over time within the same firm. And in that perspective, uh, the model doesn't do so. Model doesn't have so good fit. So it, it explains much better differences between firms than uh, within the same firm over time. Uh, below this uh, R-squared decomposition, you notice that there is this correlation of uh, UI and then this XB refers to the fitted value of output. So that's this kind of, uh, um, so this, this correlation indicates that, okay, is there potentially this endogeneity problem? Is there potentially a correlation between UI and these X variables? And indeed we get very high correlation coefficient, 0 0.77 here. 
So that might suggest that indeed there, there is potentially the endogeneity issue present. And also, if we now look at the coefficients of this uh, OPEX variable and capital stock, uh, uh, the capital stock still has a relatively high coefficient, but notice that this uh, coefficient of OPEX uh, becomes much, much smaller than in, the, in this uh, pooled regression that we considered in the first lesson. So that was closer to 0 0.4, and now it is only 0 0.03. And, and also not, uh, not even statistically significant anymore in this case. So clearly there was very, very big difference when we took this kind of heterogeneity term UI in terms of uh, fixed effects estimation explicitly into account. Um, this, uh, below this uh, regression output, there is this uh, sigma U refers to the estimated standard deviation of these U terms and sigma E is the uh, estimated standard deviation of the of what I have indicated by by v terms, and and this uh, rho is the fraction of variance due to this uh, uh, heterogeneity term u i. And also below the the regression output, there's also uh, f test. So we can also apply f test in the panel data case to to test that the, the null hypothesis that uh, there are not any kind of heterogeneity terms u i present at all, and uh, the F statistic, uh, the value of the test statistic is very high, 145. And we also have the p-value for that test, which is 0, 0.00, so almost, uh, almost uh, equal to zero. So that would suggest that we can, we can uh, reject the null hypothesis that there is, uh, there is no time, time invariant heterogeneity present in the, in the data. So those kind of, uh, kind of uh, information we can get in the, in the regression output of Stata when we use the fixed effects uh, model. Uh, one more thing I want to point out. So Stata does uh, report this uh, constant term. Here it is, this uh, minus 1.78. Um, I believe that, uh, that Stata is uh, normalizing this coefficient so that, uh, so that the average of ui becomes equal to zero. So we need to have some kind of normalization of this ui to be able to identify the coefficient, so so um, uh, that's that's probably what uh, what uh, Stata is using. Uh, at least uh, I, I would hypothesize uh, that, but I don't I don't know for sure. But uh, but because Stata needs to calculate also the the uh, standard deviation, the sigma u, then then it also has to has to normalize those ui so that it's uh, uh, sum of ui is equal to zero. So most likely that's the normalization used to get this get this coefficient, but this constant term is not usually really so interesting in the in the fixed effects model because you cannot really uh, distinguish it from those firm specific effects. So we can also utilize uh, this time series time series dimension. It's quite common also in the in the fixed effects model to include a deterministic time trend. So uh, I was trying this to in order to check that there could be help to improve this uh, uh, R-squared statistic for this within firms. Uh, but uh, it turns out this, uh, this time trend, at least uh, if, if we put this kind of uh, linear trend, uh, uh, it doesn't really improve the empirical fit notably. Uh, and uh, this coefficient is very, very small and not, not significant. So in the following, I do not anymore use this, uh, this uh, time trend. However, it would be possible to, to do then all kinds of, uh, kinds of uh, utilize this time series dimension more effectively, U utilize all, all kinds of uh, uh, time series techniques. I will, I will use, discuss those in the next video, in fact, in more detail. But now let's consider then this alternative approach, which is the so-called uh, random effects model. So now the key difference here between the fixed effects and random effects models is that in the random effects models, we, we explicitly assume that these explanatory variables are uncorrelated with this heterogeneity terms UI, okay? So both in the fixed effects and random effects models, we actually assume that these heterogeneity U are random variables. So this terminology fixed versus random effects 
might sometimes be misleading a little bit because uh, it's not that the, whether this UI are random or not. In both approaches, we, we model UI as random variables. But, uh, but in the random effects model, we assume that this UI is essentially uncorrelated with the explanatory variables. Okay? So in other words, in random effects model, we assume away this uh, endogeneity problem, whether, whether, whether it's a good assumption or not, uh, uh, that's what the random effects model assumes. So if this, uh, this assumption is correct, that if, if these uh, uh, heterogeneity terms UI do not correlate with the explanatory variables, then uh, it's useful because then the random effects estimator is more efficient than the fixed effects estimator. However, if it is, uh, uh, if it is uh, wrong, then the random effect uh, effects is inconsistent and therefore this uh, fixed effects estimator should be used. So in the next video, I will show you how we could actually test this hypothesis. So we can, we can of course run both fixed effects and random effects and then use an empirical statistical test to determine whether we should use random effects or fixed effects. So um, nowadays, perhaps uh, many researchers are tempted to sort of categorically to just use this uh, fixed effects to be on a safe side. But uh, please notice that this, uh, if indeed that if this uh, assumption of no endogeneity is uh, is uh, true, then the random effects would be more efficient. Uh, so uh, so therefore it would be uh, useful to also keep in mind this random effects as a, as a possibility. Okay, so how does the, the random effects uh, uh, work then? So the idea here is that uh, that uh, uh, I don't go to the to the details, but here here is the the stata output of the random effects model using this electricity distribution data. So notice that this data also refers to this random effects uh, GLS regression. GLS was the generalized least squares. Okay. So now if we if we assume away endogeneity, what is left is uh, is the um, what is left is heteroscedasticity and uh, autocorrelation. But because we have very specific type of heteroscedasticity, because we have this, uh, these random UI terms, so then we can use this kind of panel data structure to, to eliminate this uh, heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation. So this is what this GLS estimation does. So, so it is this generalized least squares. So we can utilize this panel data to then deal with this heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation. So that's the essence of the random effects estimation. So notice that the, the stata output for the random effects model is very, very similar to the, to the fixed effects output. So for example, we have still this, uh, this uh, decomposition of overall R squared to this within effects and between effects. So remember, within effects is this kind of time series component how much the model explains variation within the same firm and between is then how much the model explains uh, uh, variation of output across the different firms. And uh, we also have this kind of decomposition of the, of the composite error term, what I denoted by epsilon, uh, til, epsilon tilde. So what is the fraction of variance due to this, uh, this uh, time invariant u? And what is this uh, this uh, standard deviation of this v? So the state notation is u and e. E is what I have earlier denoted as v. So also according to the random effects model, a uh, large proportion of the variation is is due to this uh, this uh, firm specific ui. And uh, now if we look at the the coefficients of uh, opex and capital stock. Uh, Notice that uh, both variables have actually much larger coefficients in the random effects model. So, so OPEX has uh, almost 0 0.08, whereas in the in the case of fixed effect it was uh, 0 0.03, and capital has a coefficient of 0 0.848, whereas in the fixed effect it was something closer to 0 0.6. And uh, now also the OPEX is uh, statistically significant in the, in the random effects model. 
So whether we assume that there is endogeneity present or not, uh, in this application at least, makes quite a big difference to the, to the coefficients. And uh, as I mentioned before, if the endogeneity is not present, so Stata also communicates it here by stating this, that, okay, correlation between ui and x variables is equal to zero. So, so this is occurs by the, by the assumption. And uh, if we assume that this, these uh, uh, UI terms are normally distributed, then it's possible to use the so-called Volta uh, g squared test, which is reported over there, so to, to test for the joint significance of the model. Okay, so now we have observed that the, whether we use the fixed effects or random effects, it does make quite a big difference in this, uh, this application. And we remember that the main difference is this, uh, what is also indicated here, that the random effects model always assumes that this uh, firm-specific UI do not correlate with any of the explanatory variables, whereas the fixed effects allows for this correlation. So that's the key distinguishing feature of the, of the fixed effects versus random effects models. Both include this kind of uh, uh, time invariant uh, uh, latent heterogeneity term UI into account. The only difference is whether this uh, UI correlates with the explanatory variables or not. So in the next video, I will then expand from here a little bit. I will show you how we can test for this hypothesis of uh, whether we should use fixed effects or random effects, and then some additional extensions to, to also model the Time, uh, time dimension and also the cross-sectional dimension in, in, the, in the panel data setting. Thanks.